What's up, y'all? It's MMA Analyst here to do my recap for UFC 128. Damn, I got 10 right, 3 wrong, and I would have gladly traded it for 1 right, 12 wrong if the 1 right was the main event, but it is not what happened. Uh, basically, long story short, Shogun got his ass beat. Uh, now let's elaborate a little bit about it. Um, fight came out. Right away, Shogun was throwing these long telegraphed, far out lunging punches that uh, normally are a lot faster and uh, got taken down got in the position that I pretty much was guaranteed this fight was going to go which was half guard uh, a position that he spends a lot of time practicing and is very good from and uh, John Jones used his length and elbows and elbows to the body um, and his reach and strength to basically uh, keep him from being able to get that sweep, keep him from being able to get back to the feet as quick as he normally would like to. Um, and basically, that's what happened. He Now, the biggest thing, and I don't know anything about what happened in the background. I don't know anything except that before that, fr from that initial takedown, Shogun was on his back trying to get deep under so he could duck under, maybe reach for a leg, maybe whatever. I think John Jones threw, you know, it's tiring from the bottom, but uh, John Jones threw a bunch of uh, shots to the uh, to the body, elbows, etc., etc. Um, but Shogun was gassed. No excuses. Shogun was gassed, though. Before he was taking big gulps for breath, in the middle of round one. Um, and pretty much it was over from there. If you're going to get tired against John Jones. You're going to lose. If you're going to get tired against John Jones in round one. You're going to get your ass beat. And he got tired really fast. Ring rust is a real thing. It doesn't change the fact that John Jones executed a perfect game plan. Um, he went out there, his stand-up was on point. You know what, the little knee things, damn, the little Anderson Silva kicks to the knee, ah, wasn't really, you know, it's the third surgery coming off, it's not illegal, Anderson Silva does it, I don't think he'd been doing it to anybody whose knee was jacked up though, but the third knee surgery, and, and the other thing is, if John Jones ain't really been Doing that a lot in the past, so now he's doing these kicks to the guy's knee who had had a blown three times. He's not doing anything wrong. It's not illegal. I'm just saying that I wasn't feeling that. Did that have any effect on the fight? Most likely not. There's no excuses. Shogun got his butt whooped. Um, what does this mean next? Shogun is going to, I don't know, we'll see. Was he was he hurt again? Was he, he, he clearly was not 100%. He looked like he was somewhere near, somewhere in between Forrest Griffin fight and Coleman. He was dead tired in the first round. And before all of this stuff happened. So what's next for him? I don't know. Probably a report about how he was doing. He's not going to say anything, but we'll see. What's up for John Jones? We already know Rashad Evans. Very interesting how they how it appeared like John Jones, you were teammates with Rashad. You guys said you would never fight. Now you're fighting and then Rashad took the role. Yeah, well, never say never, but really the reality is John Jones is the one that basically was like, I'll fight Rashad when he said it on the radio. And Rashad's like, really? I didn't know that. And then Rashad's not going to be in that camp anymore. So basically, I don't know. Also, I did notice that John Jones did not thank Rashad for helping him get where he is. Now, if Rashad did not help John Jones get where he is, then there's no reason to, to thank him. But he did. And John Jones has been very vocal about how much help Rashad, uh, Rashad gave him in training camps, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, being a team partner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Needless to say, 
I don't know. I don't know how much of a John Jones fan I am. It's got nothing to do with him beating Shogun. It's got to do with... I mean, anybody who's ever been in a gym, trained with people... It's not about fighting friends. That's not what it is. It's not about fighting friends. Friends can fight, help each other make money, sure. But training partners is a completely different thing. So John Jones, in a nutshell, used Rashad Evans and then discarded him. And Greg Jackson um, sits back idly as it happens. I'm just saying. It's not a good look. It's definitely not a good look. But it doesn't have to be a good look. Jones is the champ. Jones looked amazing. Rashad's next. Rashad's going to be at a big disadvantage in a lot of places other than wrestling. He's going to have to come serious. So I think that's all I got to say about that fight. Damn. Like I said, 10 right, 3 wrong. Boy, I would have been happy if I came on here talking about, damn, I only got one right. Uriah Faber, Faber versus Eddie Wineland. Um, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but I cannot stand Uriah Faber stand-up. I can't stand it. It's the most one of the most annoying. I think it's like Dominic Cruz. I probably dislike his standing worse. Probably. But Uriah Faber is probably second place when it comes to people who are really good fighters who have the same repetitive, like they do the same thing over and over. Like Clay Greed is not a good fighter. His, I mean, he's not a good striker. And that one fight against Takanori Gomi, he doesn't normally strike like that. Even though he's not a good striker, he never looks that bad. But what Uriah Faber does with his hands and throwing his body into stuff is just... It's unorthodox, but like not good unorthodox. And he gets his fights done on the ground, and it's a good win. The fight in general, it's a decent fight. Um, I wasn't a big fan of it, though. But Uriah Faber did um, what he wanted to do, but it was a lot closer than he wanted it to be. Uh, he definitely probably was a little bit surprised in that first round. And then he pulled it together and came through with, uh, with the final two rounds. But uh, Wineland looked good, but... Again, uh, Uriah Faber is on another level, but there you go. <clears throat> Jim Miller versus Kamal Shalarus. Oh, sheesh. Um, I can't stand when people stand up like this. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just saying, you know. Jim Miller is good at what he's good at. Kamal Shalarus is good at what he's good at. Why are these guys going out there and fighting in areas that they're just not that good at? Go out there and try to do what you do. Do that. Do that. I don't want to see Jim Miller trying to box with Kamal Shalarus and these guys looking like sloppy dudes at a bar. I want to see you guys. You guys are world-class or at least top in your own thing. So do it, please. I don't want to see wrestlers in sloppy brawls and then going for takedowns every now and then. Honestly, I'd rather see you guys just see what happens on the ground. Or if Miller wants to take it to the ground and Sean Lewis wants to keep it on the feet, then Miller try and execute your game plan. You still won. You did your thing. Um, in the end, you know, yeah, Miller ended up getting the Miller ended up getting the the finish, um, but it is what it is. Nate Marquardt versus Dan Miller. Yeah, I knew before the fight this was going to be the most boring fight, and it was. But Nate Marquardt uh, was easily able to um, to basically impose his will. I'm not going to talk much about that. I don't know if you guys are waiting for jokes and stuff. Obviously, this ain't the card for that. At least not with the results. But uh, what's up for Nate Marquardt next? I don't know. To be honest, you know, he just hasn't been looking good. Win or lose, he hasn't been looking good. In this fight, he was able to stuff takedowns and he was able to get his own takedowns. But, you know, if he fights Vitor Belfort or, you know, he's trying to get back to the title against Anderson or something, like... 
it's just not a good look. He's got to really, I don't know. He's just got to get back to something. Whatever. Krokop versus Brendan Schaub. Good Lord. It's worse than I thought. Not because it's Brendan Schaub, but just Krokop has nothing. He has nothing left. I'm pretty sure he has had nothing left for a couple years now. But please retire. Please. Please. He spent the first round, I think he threw a kick. Second round, he threw an elbow in the clinch. All defense, and the defense is all right at best. And then tries to open it up in the third and gets knocked out. Please. Krokop. Stop. Now. Either stop now. There's two options. And this is from a fan. Stop now. Or go back in time and stop then. That's it. Two options. Brendan Schaub. Good win. You know, you, you beat you beat the name, Mirko Krokop. Um, yeah, you show some good takedowns for sure. I think is in the third round. He has some nice takedowns. Um, and striking was pretty good. But, uh, I mean, champion in the future? No. Top 10? I don't know, maybe 10 in the future. But not for beating Mirko Krokop. Uh, Kane versus Marshall. Wow, Marshall did not even want to get touched in the face. He was diving from across the cage. When you're that afraid to get hit, your takedowns are not going to be good. And uh, they weren't. And Kane stopped him, caught him with the uppercut. Mergliata, that guy is just mean. How are you going to let this man take that much of a beating? Like, I know you're supposed to let the fight go on, but did you really think Elliot Marshall was going to come out of that beating somehow? I mean, props to Elliot Marshall for uh, for not giving up. But, whew. If I'm his family, unborn child, I'm saying, doc, a referee, stop this. Corner, throwing the towel. He's not getting up. This is it. There's no reason for all this beatdown to go down. Um, Edson Barbosa versus uh, Anthony Njukani. Good fight. Barbosa won the first round. Had a couple knockdowns. Some stuff got really, like he slowed down. His aggression went down. I think he got tired. Second round, he lost it. And then third round, it looked like it was going to be Barbosa. And then at the last... I mean, it looked like it was going to be maybe in Jakani. And then at the last moment, he gets a takedown. I'm like, that's not enough, dog. You're still going to lose this fight because of that. And then he dropped... He basically rocks him with the, with the head kick. Spinning back kick. But... I'm like, does he win because of the stumble and because of the takedown? And I think I got to give it to Barbosa. Close fight. Good fight. Um, but yeah, it's got to work on not getting tired when you're whooping somebody in the first round. You're whooping dude in the first round and got tired. Didn't see Al- um, Almeida versus Pyle. That's one I got wrong. Um, I think, yeah, Pyle ended up taking the decision. Um, didn't see Pellegrino Tebow. Uh, I guess it went to Gleason Tebow, but it looks like it was a close one. Benavides versus Loveland. Benavides took it by decision. Uh, Catone versus Philippou. Catone wins by decision. And then we saw Rafael Asankau get smashed by Eric Koch. And Eric Koch had some uh, very calm, nice stand-up. I mean, not like he was fighting... um, Somebody who's going to come back and maybe bust him up. But he was really calm, really collected, really cool. And really confident with the strikes. Good fight for as long as it lasted. UFC 128. It's over. We got a new champ. He's he's 23 years old. And as pretentious and annoying as you can be. MMA is important. Peace.